Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, back again with another video and in this video we are talking about is MacBook Air good for programming? So it's a new season, it's a new year, a lot of you are taking admission in new universities, colleges and you might be looking up for a new laptop and obviously when you see the first time this MacBook Air you see that hey it's a Mac product, it's in affordable range but is it going to be good for my programming needs or not? So this is going to be my one spot reference where I will be referencing to all those people asking the same question in my Facebook page, in my email that hey, here are my thoughts on MacBook Air and you can just watch this video. So let's get started and talk about MacBook Air for programming. First and foremost, we need to clear up some of the ground basics. Now again, everything is just a perspective. There is no such thing as good or bad. Like for example, if I talk about my phone, which is OnePlus, it might be a really amazing for phone for me, but it might be really a terrible phone for you. It depends on use case, what you really want to do with your phone. A person who is an amazing photographer will choose a OnePlus uh, or maybe a Pexel instead of some other low-end phone which is having very terrible camera. So again, uh, not making a judgment over cameras or mobile. I'm just saying that, hey, it depends on perspective what you really want to do. Again, this video is not about fighting over Mac or Windows or Linux, which one is better, which one is not. These are just my thoughts on MacBook Air. With that all clear up, let's get started. Of course, one more thing. This video is not sponsored by anybody. These are just my personal thoughts. So in this video, I'll touch upon a couple of subjects, what you really want to do because programming is a very large paradigm. It can be web, mobile, machine learning, AI. It can be a tons of things what you really want to do. So for which domain this machine can be really good and for which domain this machine can be terribly bad, I'll talk about that. Now I've been using Mac for a really long time. The time when MacBook used to come with even the CD drive. My one, the old one is having even the CD drive. Can you imagine? To the latest one which came up the last year and it is, it is really, people call it as dongle life. This is the one with the touch bar. So yes, I do have some of the experience with the MacBook. So let's talk about this one by one. The one thing that you should be clear about MacBook Air is it is the first entry line of the MacBook. The reason why it's so much affordable because it's so much not on the high end of the specs. The screen is just okay. It's not going to be the be best MacBook display which it is known for. It's just okay -ish display and also the specs are not very high end. Remember, it's just an entry point. So what for what programming it's going to be decent? Now, if you are into very early stage of programming, you have just entered into college, you'll be writing some code on C, C++, maybe Python, and we'll be doing some of the web work like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, then it's an amazing machine. You cannot just uh, beat with that. It's so much affordable, yet so much high performance, and you will have no problem at all. MacBook Air, as the name says, Air, it's designed for the lightweight work. You'll be really happy with the presentation making, what the presentation you make, PowerPoint presentation, Word documents, simple editor-based stuff like Sublime Text, Atom, uh, maybe VS Code, you are designing some of the web templates. For entire web development, I have seen that this machine faced no problem at all. Whether that web development is on PHP, maybe on WordPress, Django, Node.js, or anything else at all. For the front-end part, it is really an amazing machine. You'll face no lags, full support, browsers are amazing. Everything is so much amazing for the web development. So in case your goal is to become a web developer and you just want to have a machine which doesn't let you down, MacBook Air is really a nice choice. Now coming up onto the point which is really the next one for which you are maybe buying this machine which is mobile development. Now for the mobile development, there is an if clause here. Now, if you're looking just to get started with the iPhone development, then it's a decent machine. I won't be calling it as a really high performance. It really lags at a variety of points. Even uh, as it get older, uh, you will see that the Xcode has started lag up and your simulator of the iPhone is gonna take a little bit longer in just booting up. So it's not the perfect machine, but yeah, it's a decent one. You can do iPhone development on it and you will face no problem at all. But again, if you are doing high-end development, making just toy apps like few fun apps to get ready or get started, it's a good machine but not at all really amazing if you have five or three, uh, five or ten storyboards and you want to go really depth, opening up the machine for a really long time, it, it's not going to survive long for that. And again, if you'll be opening up multiple simulators, which you should while you are making and testing the apps, it's going to lag quite a lot. So whole story short, if you're doing iPhone development, one simulator at a time and that's it, no more than that. 
Moving on to the next question that might be bothering you is, can I do Android development on MacBook Air? Yes, certainly you can do, but the performance of Android Studio on MacBook Air is terrible. Yes, that's the truth. It's really, really the worst performance I have ever seen on any MacBook. At our offline institute, a couple of students are using the MacBook Air and I have seen a terrible performance on Android Studio. Now, this, this terrible performance comes up until unless they run a simulator. The moment you'll open up a simulator of an iPhone, uh, of an Android, it's, it's gonna just lag a lot and you'll be waiting for quite a long time. I've also seen that if you just plug up your real device and just go with that, then the Android Studio is decent, still not one of the best performance I have seen. So keep in mind that it's a decent machine, but for the Android development, it's not gonna handle much and you will be really facing down that, hey, it's, it's not the amazing machine. I don't like to love to work on this machine. For Android, it's not. There are lots of other choices if your goal is for Android. I won't be recommending for Android this MacBook Air. Moving further, a very small audience might be looking up for this MacBook Air for the machine learning and AI development. Now let me tell you honest opinion about it. Now if you're going for the Python very early stage, like you might be looking for the NumPy and Pandas and just playing around a little bit with that, it's okay till then. The moment you will start of are doing something really rigorous and you will have a large data set and even if you want to just pre-process the data set or maybe fetch into some algorithm it's going to perform the worst possible as it could so for the machine learning i won't even recommend you to get onto the macbook air even not for the tensorflow js although it looks a really lightweight tensorflow js but it's not so much lightweight uh, you will see a lot of issues in your MacBook Airs. It's not an ideal thing for machine learning. So on to a whole note to uh, the new students who are trying to purchase the MacBook Air. If your goal is just basics with the C, C++, Java, Python, web development, then it's a great machine, not for something really amazing like app development or machine learning. It's not an amazing machine. I would recommend all of you to bump up your budget a little bit and go for MacBook Pro. I know the things that we really want are always out of the budget, but that's not the point of this video. This video was only meant to present my views about MacBook Air because this was a question being asked quite a lot. So that's why I have just made this video. Okay, so these are my thoughts about MacBook Air. I hope you have enjoyed this video and this is going to help you to make a purchase decision about your next laptop. Let me know what laptop you are thinking to buy for this upcoming semester and what uh, at what field you are planning to go in the programming. I would really love to see your thoughts that what is the domain that interests you most. Please comment down that in the below section. I read all of them. That's it for this video. Make sure you like this video and share this video as well so that some of your other friends can also get some knowledge about MacBook Pro and MacBook Air. That's it for this video. We'll catch up next time.